everyone, welcome back. This is episode 25 and we're going to cover the year 2022, 2022. So, lots going on this year. Number one, uh, biggest thing is uh, Mr. Lincoln Alexander Wilson is uh, celebrating his first birthday. I think he enjoyed that cake, what do you think? Alright, so let's get into uh, what's going on ranch-wise this year. So here is a basic plan, uh, kind of a layout of our building plan. So you can see uh, the uh, very top picture there is the, the roof, you know, the layout of the roof. Uh, you can see right underneath that is the back of the house. It has three garage doors. And this, uh, this particular house has a wraparound porch on three sides, not the side with the garage doors, but the other three sides. So moving down, you get the, uh, the north view of the property. I'm sorry, the north view of the house. Uh, there's a door there, windows and that type of stuff. Those doors, the middle door there is to the kitchen. The door to the right is an office. Right underneath that is a picture of the front of the house. You can see the trapezoid windows, the three trapezoid windows up top. You can see two doors and two windows. There's actually four windows there. The doors have uh, narrow windows next to them. The picture underneath that is the very back of the house uh, facing east. And you can see it has three garage doors. Originally, that middle garage door was supposed to be bigger, but you know we compromised after some searching for doors and that type of thing. And instead, all three of those doors will be the same height that 12 foot tall. So, uh, just so y'all know, if you're ever looking for big garage, big tall garage doors, you can find 12 by 12s. If you go bigger than that, you better. Uh, Go find a gold mine because they're expensive. All right, if you look at the picture underneath that one, you will see the south side of the house. Uh, you see that front porch all the way to the left. There's one door on this side that is actually to the master bedroom. So I have a door from the master bedroom coming right out onto the porch. Why not, right? So anyways, and don't pay too much attention to the very bottom. That's just about load and you know, where to put this, that, and all the other. This thing was originally supposed to be built uh, with red iron. So it's gonna be a metal building, period. The price before COVID to build this this thing, just the shell, was $203,000, okay? It's a lot of money, but you know, you know, we're moving forward on this thing. Well, the price as of early 22, or late 21 when I talked to the guy because metal had gone up so much and this and that and everything else under the sun that price went from 203,000 to 515,000 well I'm not going to spend that kind of money so I told him I said well thank you for the for the bid and uh but I'm sorry we're gonna have to into a relationship here because I can't afford that. I'm not going to afford that even if I could afford that. I said, I think I'm just going to have to build this thing myself. So using the same plans instead of the red iron and metal, I decided to stick frame this thing and that's exactly what I've planned moving forward. I can build this thing a lot less money than that. All right, so meet Donnie Dennis. So Donnie Dennis is a guy that had done some uh, remodeling work for me here in Texas and uh, asked him to come over and sit down and chit chat with me. And we sat down and I showed him the plans. And I said, listen, I'd like to build this, you know, I'd like to build this thing in Montana. I said, uh, got my sons, my wife, you know, we can build these things ourselves. I just need a little extra help. You know, can't, can't do it with just us. I'm gonna have to have not an army, but a small army. And he understood that and we talked about it and he said, well, let's, let's go take a look at that. So, so we flew to Montana. Uh, this is uh, probably late March. We flew to Montana to check this thing out. This is what happened. We got there. So first thing I had to do is get out the tractor and start pulling those tires because uh, it had dumped a bunch of snow. Well, we measured everything on that slab we needed to. And uh, I'll tell you this while we look at some of these pictures of 
being snowed into the cabin. So, uh, yeah, this is from uh, inside the cabin looking out, and you can see it's nothing but a blizzard out there. But we figured out what we needed, and, uh, you know, we uh, came to an agreement that uh, he would uh, try to get his brother. He and his brother would come up, and, uh, you know, we'd get this thing built over the summer. Well, uh, everything was going as planned, but his brother was working somewhere else, and so he ended up getting a, a, another guy he knew, and that guy's name was Jeremy. So it's like Jeremy, but with a CH, Jeremy. Anyway, that uh, camper in the background is uh, Carlos's Snore Shack. So when we're up there, that's where Carlos stays in that RV. And uh, one of the reasons, because he snores so much. So he stays in the Snore Shack. But anyway, so uh, we made a deal and uh, we're, uh, we'll get a game plan together and try to get up here late May. But uh, we're staying for a little while, a couple weeks, and uh, uh, Donnie flew back. So uh, he was only up for a few days, but he got a lay of the land, figured out, you know, whatever, and I need a guy with some real carpentry experience. So uh, again, we made a deal and we got a game plan. So enough about that till that starts. So uh, here's some pictures that uh, Stephen and Chase took uh, between video and pictures of them walking around out in the snow. So let's enjoy those for a minute. As you see, there's quite a bit of uh, snow on the ground. This is a heck of a little snowstorm. This video, the boys are driving uh, on the north side of the property on the main road there and uh, they're driving down our fence line. So our fence line's to the right. You can see the high fence there. And uh, yeah, that's the road between us and our neighbor, Jason. Well, the sheep and goats don't seem to mind the cold too much. So they just walk around like it's nothing. And there's across the snore shack. And I think there's a little bit of snow on the truck. Just a smidge. If you're not from an area where you've been in snow quite a bit, stuff's uh, actually pretty difficult to walk in. So, I think what Chase is trying to do there is showing you how far up his leg that snow is compared to where he's standing. So it's fairly deep. This is our generator for the cabin. We finally got it set up on a propane bottle. It's for temporary use. It's not for all the time backup. But again, we have electricity now. So I don't know if y'all noticed that green box there a minute ago, but that is the electrical box. All right. Looks like uh, Julia and the boys are uh, outside in the snow doing something here. Not sure exactly what, but I see Steven has a tape measure in his hands. Well, it looks like uh, they're all out there playing with their cameras in the snow. And uh, looks like they're playing around with the uh, slow-mo feature. Here's a picture of Julie's smiling face. Not sure exactly what Julie's pointing at here, but looks like she's pointing south. Okay, it looks like uh, Julie and the boys have decided to make a snowman. So, uh, I've seen much bigger ones. Yeah, looks better now he's got that hat on. And this is a view from the back of the cabin, looking down towards where the gate's at. Our driveway is about a quarter mile long, maybe an eighth of a mile, between an eighth and a quarter mile. But uh, this is the top of the hill looking down on that. So this is the opposite direction. Uh, kind of the southwest. You can see the sun's going down. It's west-southwest. And here's a picture of Chase out in the snow in front of Carl Carlos's snore shack. I like in that video. Uh, snow was a little deeper than Chase thought it was going to be. This is the next day and I guess Chase is just showing you around. It just keeps on snowing. And here's a picture of Chase with a lot of snow on his head.
Can we stop it? Yeah. I think it's, I think this, we know why there was all that snow on his head now. And there's a picture of Steven. Let me guess, he's gonna try the same thing. I gave Chase a big chuckle. All right, what you're looking at here is a bunch of bowls with uh, green, red, yellow, purple dye in them. We are bored to death. It's Easter and uh, we literally are bored to death. So we've decided to boil like four dozen eggs and make deviled eggs and go bring them to our neighbors. So this is what cabin fever will do to you. When you can't get outside and do a thousand things you need to do, because there's too much snow or it's too cold or whatever. You look for things to do inside and you can only watch so much TV. So we dyed a bunch of eggs and started to uh, decorate them. So yeah, so a little Picasso stuff going on there. Well, let me tell you what, they may look funny, but our neighbors didn't have any problem. We brought them to several different neighbors and uh, they eat them up. All right, it's time to go home. So we went home. So now it's May, we're headed back to Montana and I'm gonna introduce you to the building crew. First you have myself and Julie. So we're on the building crew. And you have Steven and Chase and there's Donnie. He's the foreman. He's been hired to be the foreman of the job, the boss man on the job. He's the man with the experience. We're gonna take a couple leads from him and take off. So this is Jeremy, again, Jeremy with a CH, Jeremy. So here's Carlos, and last but not least, the Rickson brothers. You got Andy there in the front, holding that baby uh, goat, or baby sheep, I'm sorry. And then there's Mike, leaned on the gate back there. So got the Rickson brothers. So that is our building crew. And, you know, we're gonna get to work. See, we got over Yeller back out there. Uh, next to Carlos' snore shack, the sheep are running around. So there is a uh, brand new baby goat there with its mama taking off behind it. Looks like we got a new a sheep. We got lots of babies being produced out here. This is that lower corral. We have actually built a uh, another shelter down there in that corral, so uh, they have more than one spot to uh, get out of the sun or get out of the wind and rain, snow, that type of thing. All right, so this is a picture of this orange and yellow machine here. It's a telehandler. This is a uh, machine we, we're gonna need to uh, lift things up. So as you can see, it's uh, an 1155. That means it'll stretch out 55 feet and it can pick up 11 tons. Is 11 tons or 11,000 pounds? I don't remember. So, but it can pick up more than anything we're gonna pick up. Well, in this picture, you can see we got a little framework going up, but these posts here that the telehandler's carrying through the mud, these are six by six posts and they're all 16, no, they're all 20 foot long. I think we have 16s and some 20s, if I remember right. These all came out of Georgia and we're gonna have to erect 88 of them. So this trailer has come in you can see that it has our metal trust on it. We're fixing to unload this thing. And in the background up there on the hill, you can see that we have two by fours, two by sixes. We have all those uh, six by six posts. We've got wood piled up everywhere. So our supplies are there and we're ready to get to work. So we're only lacking one thing from getting this whole show on the road, so. We'll get to that in a minute. So here's a picture of Jeremy feeding one of the uh, sheep out of his hand. And here's the Rickson brothers. And behind them is Mike's son and daughter-in-law, which is Jeremy and Janae. And they've come over just to see what we're up to. Well, this is what we've been waiting on forever. So Chase and I finally ran over to Billings because it was gonna take another couple of days to deliver these. These came out of Florida, I believe. Uh, these are the Simpson strong tie to hold those posts up. And uh, we went to get them. And here they are, we're laying them out. 
like I said, we had to wait to get started till uh, they came in. And this is what they look like. So we put them where they go. You drill holes in the concrete, start putting the uh, bolts in. So we've got these laid out and you can see we're putting these posts up. We're putting these posts up about every eight feet. Like, well, every exactly every eight feet on center. And we got all the posts up on the, uh, the house part of it. And looks like we got one plate up or I'm not sure if we have the second plate up on top of the wall or not. There we are working on the top plate. And it looks like we got another uh, baby sheep here. Yeah, that's a cute little guy. Figured I'd pick him up and rub him a little bit. And Julie's walking back from the new house to the cabin down the road and uh, yeah, she found this snake. We're not sure what kind of snake this is. One of, maybe one of you guys know more about snakes, but uh, this was in the road and then she uh, filmed it crossing the road. So let's watch it slither across the road here. I'd say that snake's probably every bit of five foot long, if not closer to six. All right, let's see, we got our post up, we got our plates up on top and we're actually starting to stud out the walls here and uh, you know, get these uh, windows where they need to be. So you can see here, we got the uh, three 12 by 12 foot garage doors framed out on the back side of this thing. So there's a better picture as Carlos is walking by. And this is actually, uh, we call this the back of the house, but this is actually the east side. And even some uh, baby lambs showed up to uh, give us a hand. And realize that some of these pictures may be out of order, you know, uh, and you got a crew of 10 people here or so, uh, everybody's taking, snapping a shot here or there and they send it to each other. So they all end up, you know, out of order somehow or another. Try to keep them in the best order as possible, but I think y'all get the point. And as you can see, we, uh, you know, every time there's construction, there's rain. I can't tell you how many times we're out there in the mud, putting that telehandler and that tractor to work. Yep. You see that telehandler in this picture? It's probably extended out about 40 feet there. So, all right, here's a picture. We got most of the uh, windows framed out. Left some room for the doorways. We're gonna get to that soon. And here's another one of those uh, electrical boxes. So this gives power. You can see we have a big black extension cord running to the house so we can power a few things, charge those, uh, those two Genie uh, scissor lifts up and look at Steven's hair or what hair so Carlos decided to talk Steven into letting him uh, cut his hair yeah he shaved it all off so Steven has no hair well remember that van we bought so the reason we bought that van is because I knew we would have a crew up here this year and if we all needed to go somewhere or do something I needed something that would seat quite a few people well, as you can see the big hole in the back window here and all the glass on the ground is because Carlos was weed eating and put a hole. Doctor hit a rock, hit something, put a hole into the uh, back window there. Yeah, that's gonna be expensive. So after that, as you can see, Carlos's sandwich here has a nice little hole in it. So since he put a hole in the window in the van, we decided for about the next week or so, every single meal, we had a hole. We don't care if it was a steak, a piece of fish, whatever, we put a hole in his food before he got to supper every night. We laughed, he laughed, everybody thought it was funny. Well, as you can see, the stormy skies there, and uh, yeah, look at that water. So, I don't care what kind of construction do, that rain's always there to say hello. Well. As you can see here, we got the windows all framed out. We got some of the doors framed out and we built up that front wall because we're getting ready to start flying trusses here. Well, this is an interesting sight. So Julie filmed this big old dung beetle actually rolling a ball of poo. So you can see the telehandler there, it's up in the air and we have our first truss put together. So our game plan is we're gonna put all 16 trusses together. You know, they're two pieces because these things are uh, 60 feet across. So it's two 30 footers that we have to uh, put 
put together. So here's a better look of it. And uh, like I said, we put all, all 16, well, 32 of them together to make 16 sets. And we're getting them laid out. And then we call it in the crane truck. So this guy came out of Billings, set up, and we start flying these trusses into place. That's a good picture of Carlos watching the action. And you can see we're getting some trusses put up. And now you know why we needed those scissor lifts. So uh, ladder's just not gonna do it. Again, these walls are 14 foot tall, and the very center peak of those trusses is 24 feet. So these are both 1930s. That means they're 30 inches wide and they go 19 feet in the air. And I'm just gonna go through these uh, photos. You can see the trusses are going up. And in some places, places we put uh, eight foot, six, two by six purlins. And other places we put 16 footers across two of them. So we're doing our best to alternate here. An eight foot, a 16 foot, an eight foot, 16 foot. So right now we're just putting enough to keep these things square and in frame. It's not an easy task, but it's coming together. Every day is more and more trusses. So we got these trusses up as you can see. And uh, yep, there's our first uh, four by eight sheet of OSB going up on the roof. You can see we have a little bit of OSB, two levels of it down the side here. That's Donnie on the ground and chairing me up in the uh, scissor lift. And the Ricksons came over and uh, we got busy. These uh, almost can't bring enough uh, OSB sheets up to them fast enough. So uh, Andy's carrying them up as a place and uh, Mike's setting them right where they need to go and Jeremy's up there with a nail gun going to town. There's Jeremy and Mike or, Mike or Andy one up there on the roof. All right, so this is what the inside looks like. It's about half the roof up. So all hands on deck. All right, well, here's a couple pictures that uh, we're taking from the uh, big lift here telescopic boom lift so all right so you see the van heading down uh, the driveway there so chase and steven have done a really nice job with about three rolls of duct tape to cover that hole up inside and out till we can get to a safe light auto repair and get that window exchanged well the reason we were headed out we're headed here to the fort at 49 so this is in Custer, Montana. It's right there on I-94 and it's called the Fort at 49. Uh, that's exit 49 off the interstate. And uh, great people own this place. Uh, uh, Dave's the cook uh, from Louisiana. You know, got a little Cajun spice going on there. Uh, just awesome place to eat. Uh, so we like going there on Friday nights. So and this is how their menu is. It changes every week and their menus on a uh, chalkboard there. We're taking a picture of that so we can all read it up close at the table on our phones. And when we were all straining to see it, our neighbor Patty decided to pick it up and bring it over to the table and be the hostess with the mostess. Our way back from dinner that evening, we saw this uh, deer just outside the fence. And the next morning, I had a little accident on the four-wheeler. Now remember all that mud? Well. When that mud finally hardens and all those uh, ruts get uh, really hard, yeah, I come flying around on that four-wheeler around the backside of the uh, new house and uh, hit one of those ruts and went sliding off that four-wheeler. So banged up my left knee pretty good. Uh, tore some stuff. I cannot put any weight on this thing. Well, now it's the next day. Steven is uh, extremely sick and sick to the point where he needs to go to the emergency room. Well, not only that, my knee is killing me and I need to see if it's broke. So Julie, myself, and Steven get in the uh, van and we drive to Forsyth, Montana to the emergency room. Now they got two Wilsons in their emergency room. Well, from the x-rays, my knee was not broken, but definitely ripped something in there. Uh, meniscus, something like that. So Julie ran uh, to the, uh, they put this brace on me and Julie uh, ran to the uh, drugstore in town uh, and actually rented 
I think it was $10 a month to rent a pair of crutches. Sounds like a pretty good deal, because I sure needed them. So I got online and I found this ticker brace that would allow me to still brace my knee after about, I don't know, a few days. But, you know, maybe I could actually walk on it, you know? We'll see. Well, I got that brace in and wasn't able to put a whole lot of weight on it. But So for a day or two, I had to sit in that side by side and run tools and go get things for people and bring people back and forth. And the true meaning of supervisor. So here's my crutches. This was my construction vehicle for about two days was the old Mighty Mule, Kawasaki Mule, should I say. Well, getting back to the house, here's, uh, you know, the purlins are all up, the roof's on. So, and as you can see, Donnie has started laying out and measuring construction for the floor. So he's putting these plates down and so he can start building the walls out inside. Yeah, so that's how this is going. All right, so here's these roofing nails. Some one inch, 12 gauge roofing nails, 3,000 of them. Grab these so we could put this stuff on the on the roof called titanium. I was told by everybody there in the Montana area, gotta put titanium on the roof. This is better than felt pepper, but and way better than just house wrap. You know, well, we thought a box of 3,000 nails was gonna be plenty, it wasn't. That's why we have a picture of it, because we had to go to Billings and get some more of them. So, you see uh, Andy up there in his salmon shirt uh, on top of the roof. Uh, that's what everybody's up there doing, putting thousands and thousands of nails to hold that titanium on. So, uh, I don't think there was a single person that didn't have bloody fingers uh, or missed once or twice putting those in. Nobody here is a professional roofer. But here's a back view from the road looking at it and you can see you know there's quite a bit of house wrap on it and the roof is white because it's wrapped in that titanium so on to the inside so here's us working on these windows so uh donnie is uh getting these things uh in shape these trapezoids in shape so getting some walls up some upper walls up here's the uh, titanium being put on the roof uh, no house wrap on this side yet but you can see we have added the other 10 foot purlins for these porches so and put up those other posts so we're getting this uh getting this thing built as you can see now you can see the two side porches from this back view and this is a picture of me and the tractor and i've got donnie and jeremy up on a uh, man basket so they're working on the fascia and the soffit all the way around the three sides well, it's Father's Day again, and remember, we made a tradition, so this is our third trip down to the uh, Bighorn Angler down in Fort Smith, Arkansas. So, I don't know why we don't have any pictures of the boys, but uh, Stephen and Chase were in uh, one boat, and Julie and I were in this boat. There's a picture of me and a picture of Julie catching her fish. And once again, year three, guess who won? Yes, Julie caught the most fish. I think it was somewhere around six or seven fish. So she definitely outfishes all of us. And just think, before she came to the US, she never caught a fish in her life. So here's a picture Julie took of a nice little yellow bird. Uh, you see one on top of the feeder and one on the feeder. All right, here's the goats and the sheep. So. So now that they've been here for a while, this black goat, uh, we call him Spot, because of all the spots, naturally. He is the leader. He's the head honcho. So not only over the goats, over the sheep too. He's the boss. And here's that kid again. Julie just couldn't resist picking it up and petting it for a little bit. I think it enjoyed it. All I know is he's giving her a big smile, and I like to see my woman smile. Well, here's Donnie petting that little kid too. So, ended up being up a little buck. He had some little horns starting to grow. And it's a picture of a skull that we found and it's hanging on the cabin. And as you can see, the uh, those birds that come every year and make a nest decided to start making a nest inside this skull. And here's a picture of a rainbow. So, we looked for that pot of gold and never did find it. Well, back over to the house. So, there's a picture of Mike up on the roof, and uh, 
he's getting that front porch roofed. That's a uh, 80 foot by 20 foot front porch. And from that roof, there's a picture of the pond down there. You can't really tell the difference yet because there's no water in it. Here is a picture of the measurements for those windows we need. And that's exactly what Donnie built, as you can see. So exact measurements, what those windows are. And Donnie's got them all built up and he really stiffened them up. I don't have to worry about any of this wood shifting and that type of stuff and crushing one of the windows and end up cracking it. He really beat it up. So good job, Donnie. And here's a view from those, that center window into the house. As again, you can see that he's got most of his layout, you know, for the walls down there. You know, these are already uh, drilled and tapped into the concrete. So they're not going anywhere. So here's Andy up here on the roof. Mike doing some work. So push the inside of the house. Looking out the back, three garage doors. All right, and this photo, this big long white thing here. These are our floor trusses, floor joists, whatever, the I-beams. Uh, these are 60 foot long. So we're gonna be cutting these down to about 59, I think 59 one. But uh, we're gonna be cutting these down so they'll fit in there. This is gonna give us 10 foot ceilings in the house and then we'll have the upstairs attic space. So uh, those are fun to haul into the house. Let's get set up. All right, looks like Steven and I are loading something up. I'm in the tractor and Steven's walking up there. Guess we're about to load something. Looks like more posts to me, but it could be two by sixes, who knows. And here's the front of the house. So you can see that porch there now. And those windows are covered with wrap, but they're just covered. We'll cut those out later when, we, when the glass gets there. So this picture, you can see the house wraps on the back of the garage. But as you notice, this is uh, Donnie building these bird houses out. That's what he called them anyway. They look pretty good to me. And I'm standing on the dam on the far side of the pond. So in the future, this will be water, you know, all in this pond. And that'll be the, you know, come up right to that hill where the uh, front door, front porch is at. You can see inside, uh, we're getting these uh, walls up. Again, not only do we have walls up, the doors have come in and he's putting these metal frames in the doorways. These metal frames are for the, uh, not only the interior, the exterior, they all have metal frames. The six exterior doors are all metal, but all the internal doors are uh, wood. And uh, they're all eight foot tall doors. Uh, and the majority of them are three O doors, 36 inches wide. I think there may be two or three doors that are closet doors that are a little bit smaller. So we go through all the doors and only one was damaged. It had this little hole in it in one spot and had this big scratch on it. So here's the doors. As you can see all the doors here, we have stacked, uh, thanks to Mike Rickson, we have stacked two inch foam boards. He happened to have a bunch of these foam boards. So we put a door, stacked a piece of foam, put a door, because we need to cover these and they need to sit there out of the way without anybody beating or banging on them for probably the next year. Again, some more, uh, this is a picture where the wheelbarrow's at is actually the kitchen area. This is the whole kitchen area right here. Where Julie's standing there in this picture is uh, what Chase is calling his room. And then Stephen and Chase are standing up there in the main living room. So as you can see, Jeremy is on the scissor lift and he and Donnie are actually building the upper walls in the living room. And it looks like we had another baby lamb born. And Julie couldn't resist on playing with that one either. How these little critters give her those big old smiles. I love it. So we're gonna keep lots of critters around. Well, you see this red Mahindra Roxer? This is what my neighbor Mike has. So he bought this thing and it's awesome. It's made by Mahindra. It's got a little diesel engine in it. Thing will go anywhere. Some people call it a Jeep, but it's called a Roxer. R-O-X-O-R. -O -O so Roxer. 
awesome little vehicle. And guess who backed into it? It was dark, super dark one night. And I did not see that it was parked there. And as I backed out of his driveway after dropping him off, I backed into it and uh, caught the fender. Yeah, bent the rockster, bent the door, driver door, and left red paint all over it. Yeah, I did that. So here's us out uh, one Friday night, and uh, this is gonna be uh, this is Mike and Andy's mother. Her name is Marvine. We call her Mom Marvine or Mom most of the time. Uh, if I believe right, this is, I could be wrong, but this is either her 79th or 80th birthday. So we went back out to the 40 49. As you can see, she's about to blow out her birthday candle. Again, here's a picture of the uh, house. Uh, got it wrapped up, got that titanium up. You see this 20 foot container in the front, this white container? This is a container we rented there in Billings and uh the rent's not bad on that i don't remember if it's like 70 dollars a month something like that it's not bad we kept all our tools in there to keep them dry keep them charged up you know uh again it's temporarily here's a picture of the back so we got that door in place and uh the uh, rickson brothers have done an excellent job i mean a perfect job of uh, getting this wrap on the back of this thing and uh as you can see, we do have the garage doors in now. And that was due to Mike Rickson and Jeremy uh, and myself. We worked on those. It's a little bit everybody works on something, but it took quite a few of us to get these doors in place. But we got them built, put together. I think they look pretty good. All right, so this is one of the two front corners. The problem is this corner two by six that goes across here to tie both porches in. The problem with it is in reality you need about a 30 foot board even though that porch is you know only 20 foot long you need about a 27 foot board on this angle well you can't get a board that long or you can but we couldn't find one anywhere in our area up there so you know we had to uh, put a couple together and notch them and that type of thing but worked out pretty good we got it figured out and we got these stairs built so Yep, that was, uh, we actually built these about 52 inches wide or so. And uh, didn't want it real narrow. You know, we never knew what we had to bring up there. So yeah, we built them wide. There's a picture of Steven headed out to the garage in the dark. That's what the headlamp's for. And it's about time to go. We've been here for 99 days. There's turkeys roaming around. We've shut the gate here keep the uh, sheep and goats from coming in by the cabin. Uh, we got these gates up here so we can shut them out. If not, we're worried they'll turn the front porch of the cabin into their personal playground and chew, eat on everything. And uh, we just didn't want to walk in big piles of poop. So anyway, view from the uh, last day we're going to be here during the summer. Uh, this is the uh, sunset the last day. We'll be flying out in the morning. It was hot. We called this the 99 days of hell. So anyway, we drove to the airport. I uh, parked the truck, took a picture of it. So Mr. Wes Gamble would know exactly where it was parked and uh, walked into the airport there in Billings, Montana. And you can see Julie was extremely tired. She's gonna hate me for this picture. Well, this is a picture of Arlene. Arlene is Julie's youngest sister. And she sent us a picture from the airport. She has come in from the Philippines. She is moving here to America and she'll be going to college at Lamar University in Beaumont, Texas. So she sent us a photo letting us know that she's here and here and safe. So she'll be waiting on us when we get there. Well, moving forward a little bit, here is uh, Mike has got some stuff that we have had shipped up there from Amazon and everywhere else under the sun. And he's starting to pile it up in the garage. And then he and Andy sent me this picture from Shields there in Billings. So interesting picture. It goes to an inside joke y'all wouldn't understand, but that's why they 
put on the uh, the diapers, the adult diapers, and took the picture. I asked Mike and Andy if they were going to buy something there. All they could reply is, it depends. Okay, so we're back in Montana. And what you're looking at is a 1 million BTU heater. This is a big diesel engine that produces a mass amount of, of heat. And the reason we have this thing is because it's cold. And the reason we're back up this time is because the spray foam guys are coming. We're gonna spray foam the inside of this thing. We're gonna put four inches on the ceiling and two inches on the walls. So, and here's a finished picture of that. I couldn't get in there while they were doing it to really film anything for you guys, but this is the finished product. You can see the walls have two inches, the ceilings have four inches, because everything's a two by six that you're looking at. And what's going on on the scissor lift is Mike and Andy are up there and they're putting one by four laths uh, between, uh, we're drilling them in and putting stainless steel bolts into the trusses because we need something to hang the ceiling off of. So here is another uh, Friday or Saturday night at the uh, 4049. I'll tell you who's in this picture. So to the far left is Janae and then Jeremy, and then Andy, and then Steven, and then myself, and then Mike, and then Julie. Well, if you look real good, for some reason, Jeremy's got his eyes closed, Mike's got his eyes closed, Steven's got his eyes closed, and Mike's got his eyes closed. So, something tells me we weren't ready for this picture to be taken. I got a big laugh out of that. All right, it is Thanksgiving and Arlene has flown up to uh, meet us for Thanksgiving because we're planning on going back around the 1st of December. So here we are celebrating Thanksgiving dinner at the uh, cabin. As you can see, Janae is uh, slicing up some pie. Mike's standing right behind her, ready for that first slice. And yeah, he got that slice and a lot more. He likes uh, pie. Well, here is a couple pictures of uh, Julie and Arlene in their coats, probably freezing to death. Taking some pictures. A little bit of snow on the ground, but not too bad. It's uh, warmed up just a hair, but it's almost December 1st and just about time for us to go home. And we caught this uh, picture of Bobcat down on the uh, one of the cameras. And it snowed and it came back a couple months later. I don't know if it's just sniffing around or trying to stay warm with the sheep. Who knows? Pretty interesting. Well guys, that's what we did this year. I uh, hope this video isn't too long. I hope nobody got bored to death. Uh, I will try to be, uh, in the future, try to be more detailed on what to show you guys. But again, that was our 99 days of hell. And uh, every one of us sweat, every one of us cried, and every one of us bled, I promise you that. So, but we got it done. So, uh, Things may be out of your uh, price range one day. Don't let that stop you. You can figure out how to do it. So where there's a will, there's a way. If you can afford the lumber, you can afford to build it. So uh, just because you may not have the skill set doesn't mean you can't do it yourself. You want it, there's a way to do it, guys. I hope uh, each and every one of y'all's dreams come true because that was my dream and Julie's dream and we're making it come true. All right, peeps, we'll see you guys on the next one. Uh, I'll work on that and uh, get that thing ready for you guys. And uh, like I said, I hope you are enjoying this and coming along for the ride for us, with us, should I say. If you feel we've earned it, give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you next time.